Welcome back, everyone. Thanks so much for all of the patience you have shown. I know there's no pressure for me to put out content. I'm not making any money off of this channel and never will, nor desire to. But I still appreciate it nonetheless. But first, before we get going... It's June. Happy Pride Month. I happen to be part of this community, and if you don't like it, do something else. Go taste the rainbow. It'll be good for you. Throughout this series, you're going to hear me say the term VO quite a bit. And if you're new to this, you may not know that that means video operator or videographer. When we use that term, we're usually referring to the content that's coming out of Cambodia. Specifically, I'm referring to the content that's coming out of the temple complex at Angkor Wat. So does this mean I'm finally going to start talking about those channels and the monkeys that are at the temple complexes in Cambodia? Sort of. What I want to talk about is how human behavior affects the lives of these animals. And it does that in so many ways. And we aren't excluded from that as viewers. In fact, we have a tremendous impact on the lives of those animals because we affect what the VOs do. And then I also want to talk about strategies that the VOs use to create a sense of drama or conflict because drama and conflict get more social media attention. And then, of course, I want to show you very specific research that indicates that constant human presence around these animals, whether they are directly interfering with their lives or not, has a very negative impact on many of the things that they do, such as grooming and social play and interfering with the hierarchies of eating behaviors. What I'm not going to do is get involved in naming all of the people, and I'm certainly not going to play Name That Monkey. I'm not going to name the channels because I don't want to send traffic their way. And I'm not going to name the monkeys because people lose their minds as soon as you start naming the animals. If you look at the comments coming out of some of these channels, we've got such a wide variety of people that are invested. You've got people who are completely buying everything that the VOs feed them. You've got people who are skeptical, yet commenting nonetheless, which increases the popularity of the video. And then you've got people who are just feeding the fire for their own purposes. Now, I'm being a little facetious simply because it's my nature, but there are other channels that do name the animals and they do a really good job at talking about the complexities of what is going on behind the scenes that we can see. Again, this is a lot of speculation. It is very, very difficult to get accurate information out. Okay, as I was doing research for this next series, I thought a lot about the observer effect in quantum theory. And specifically, I keep getting drawn back to this description here. One of the most bizarre premises of quantum theory, which has long fascinated philosophers and physicists alike, states that by the very act of watching, the observer affects the observed reality. So hold on to that little nugget, because I'm going to keep coming back to it, not just in this video, but in the whole series that I'm going to do. But there was something else that kept pulling me as I was doing research for this, and it was this quote from a media theorist named Marshall McLuhan working out of the 1960s. He said that the medium is the message. This means that the way you say something is just as important as what you are saying. Because very often he noticed that we focus on the content and we forget to recognize that how that content got to us actually shapes the way we interact with it and how we receive it. One of the greatest examples I use for this is what's the difference between 
watching a movie and reading the book. And of course, immediately people can tell me the differences. There are tons. And then fights start because people argue over which is better, the movie over the book. But it's the same content. It's the same story. It is just being delivered in a very different, radically different way. And because of that, we have immensely different responses to it. But McLuhan also added this little nugget that doesn't get repeated as often, which is, if you don't understand the medium, you don't understand the message. Now, I know you're probably thinking, Monkey Sentinel, if that really is your name. This is all really interesting theory, but what does it have to do with monkeys? Take a look at this photo again. You've got two adult macaques just lying on the ground. They're trying to groom. You have one, two, three, four, five, six cameras in front of us. Plus, we are from the viewpoint of another camera. Plus, there have got to be others on either side of us just by looking at this and putting all of it together. And then you've got all of these different perspectives and different angles and different framing and different focal lengths, and they're all going to go to different channels and they're all going to be uploaded as different perspectives. Speaking of that, whenever you see a cell phone camera, it's usually a tourist. Not always, but usually it is. Casual tourists will often use cell phone cameras just because they're convenient, and they can get amazing photos out of it. But you can't really control the focal length, and you can't control the lens angle and all of that stuff. So professional VOs will use DSLR or mirrorless cameras because they can get much more flexibility on the types of shots that they want to get. I know there's that saying that the camera never lies, but that's a lie because the camera lies all the time. That's all it does. Or I guess another way of saying it is that the camera only captures part of the truth. I want to go back to this little guy here. Take a look at what's on the phone screen. It's really closely cropped. It's this cute little baby, and that baby is taking up all of the frame. But if we zoom out, which is where our perspective is, well, we're from a camera angle too, and we're seeing a very, very different perspective. And if you play the video, you can see that the mom is really angry with this person for filming and getting right in her baby's face. But you don't see that on his camera, right? Because it's only capturing part of the truth and it's only capturing part of what's happening. Well, wouldn't that be the same for what we're seeing as well? But something that I find really dangerous and really concerning is that people watch these videos and then think that they know about macaque behavior, and they don't. Because what they're seeing is precisely what the VOs want them to see. It is a very curated look at a very specific group of animals that live in very specific circumstances. So when I say that you see what the VOs want you to see, I don't mean it in this kind of tinfoil hat conspiracy theory sort of way. Like, it's not a deep conspiracy. I just mean it in the sense that framing matters, and it doesn't even have to be an intentional choice. Whenever we see photos of the Great Pyramids, we always see them in this gorgeous backdrop of desert, right? And so that creates this image in our minds that these pyramids are just out in the middle of this glorious desert, and there's nothing around for miles. But it's not the truth, because if you look at other camera angles, you'll see that the Great Pyramids are actually just right next to Cairo. And the reason why I bring that up is not just to, just to talk about how framing is important um, and how camera angle is important, but also that we have a fixed idea of what these monkeys in Cambodia are like. We often think that these are wild animals, and they really aren't. They are semi-wild animals because there's a lot of urbanization around this area. 
There are major thoroughfares. There are cars. There are people constantly coming in. There's even coffee shops. If you zoom in way close on uh, Google Maps, you can actually see some of the coffee shops. And it's really important for people to remember this because it greatly affects the behavior of the animals compared to truly wild monkeys. This is another video that demonstrates all of the multiple camera angles that are taking place. You've got at least four cameras in this shot. And what's happening here is that these animals are being dumped after having been exploited on pet channels. They're being dumped out into the temple grounds. And then they will be exploited again because they are so habituated. The VOs will come out and film them again. So when I talk about the medium, as in the medium is the message. I'm not just talking about the cameras that the VOs use. I'm talking about social media itself and how we interact with it and the ways in which we interact with it. So if you take each VO and they upload to a YouTube channel, when in fact, actually, they might have several YouTube channels, they also usually have other social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I've put Telegram down here because it's not so much a social media platform as it is a kind of secure messaging. So YouTube is where they make the most money, but these other mainstream platforms specialize in short form video or short form content, and they often get people through the door. So you remember when I started this and I talked about quantum theory and the observer effect? Our reactions to these videos affect the behavior of the VOs, and they change their tactics to increase more drama, to increase more conflict. I will show you examples of this. And then that, in turn, affects the behavior of the animals. So it is very much a case of the observer affecting the observed event. Social media is a very strange kind of thing because it's ever-present but invisible. When I get online and I look at videos of monkeys, for example, I think it's just me and the monkey. Like, it's just me relating to my laptop. And I forget all of the mediation that went into getting that image to me. And I forget that maybe it's not reliable. I hope this was insightful. I'm sorry, again, that it took so long to get out. There's just so much content here and so many different ways to organize it. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.